I did it. Hello, guys, and welcome to my bird guide. If you guys want to play a hit based, full bird, full send build, then I might just have the information for you. <laughs> Couple things here full bird is not bleed, it's we're a full hit. Uh, the birds are doing all the damage. We could do a bleed build, but uh, we're doing a hit build, so it'll do crits and all that good stuff. Upsides of playing this build would be road mobility, where you do damage while you are moving, you have big combos, big burst and good recovery. Uh, the only downside for my variation is every now and then you'll probably feel it be a little inconsistent. That's because we're not kept crit. So there are ways around that and I will tell you what those are. So let's just get into it. This is my current guy. We're playing hardcore. We're leveling up. This is my second character. I died my first one. The first one was a bleed character. Oh my god! I'm dead. What? We went to Lagon and now he is Legon. So that was unfortunate. And then I decided I'm going to do a hit base build. And why did I decide that? Well, the first reason why I decided it was because there was this variation where we can do 100% crit. But I'll show you that a little later. But first, I'll just show you what we have right now on my current build. On the passives, we're going dex health here. Get a little bit of dodge and whatever because we need two points to get to 20. We get evasion, really good. Again, because we're so mobile, because we have passive damage, we can run around while a bird does damage. You want to have evasion here. You take less damage while moving, so this is a key thing. A dodge and parry for glancing blows uh, is the main thing here because we do want a glancing blow cap. So this is how you start. You go into Falconeer. Take your health here. You want to you wanna get some life. Five points here for the... Falcon Ballistic Crit. I mean, Dex is good, always. Uh, then I'm going for full damage here. Just um, flat damage. Then you get the Deflect and Weave. And I have some notes about this because you want to convert your block to glancing. So a shield with a lot of block is good here for glancing blows. Coordinated Fade is really good. It's a Silver Shroud on demand. Silver Shroud allows you to completely dodge the next attack. Any attack you know it's coming, you get this set up just before and you completely... Like, you mitigate the damage 100%. I barely ever intentionally use this, but it is good. Again, dex here with this. Like, whenever you get dex plus something else, it's good. It, it scales all your abilities, and you have dex scaling on some of the skills as well. Also, you have a node like this, where the more dex you get, you, have, you get armor. So that's really strong. Uh, we get this one, where you get health gain per dex. So you get health back as well as a... So you, not only do you get armor from how, the, how much dex you have, you also get health gain. And uh, then we go full crit here, because we're a crit build. And then full crit avoidance here. Uh, I'll just show, show you. So it's 35. You combo that with the blessing, this blessing here. So you need this to be 65. It rolls 50 to 70. And then you're done on gear. You have all the avoidance you need. Do that. And all the avoidance also becomes crit multi for your pet. So that's really strong. Then again here, we have the tailwind. Makes you fast, and again, you take less damage while moving. If your fa uh, falcon has hit anything recently, and the falcon is always hitting something, so it's always up. So combine this plus uh, this node, it's like 30% less damage taken. Very strong. Then Blade Dancer, you want to get, again, you see here a combo. Dex plus something. This time, Glancing Blows, very strong. Then I took two points here, because I create shadows. I'll show you that later. Health gain recovery, and then some more health here, so that we get... 10 points. Well, actually, you take these two to get to 10 points. This is just to get health. After you get the 10, you actually go over here and you grab dex again. Once you've grabbed, finished the dex here at the very end, you go here. Actually, what you do is you take the eight nodes here, then you take the three nodes here, and then you take the three nodes here. So that's like the progression. This is a pretty squishy class. I should mention that. There is a variation I'll talk about at the end. That's going to be another pivot, uh, another more advanced build. Uh, for now, this is the passives for this variation right here. Now, on to the skills. In order of importance, falconry. And now you see this note here as well. Falcon damage per dex. Now, this is important to understand. Almost all the nodes in falconry are global. So this one right here, falconry increases the damage of your aerial assault and dive bomb. Same thing with is it a bird. If you da uh, falcon damage globally to all the other falcon abilities rending talents same thing a portion of your 
bleed, poison, shred, and shred resistance uh, gets applied to all your abilities. Same thing here. Portion of your highest uh, global melee, increased throwing, or whatever, gets applied as well. Then you have this note here. This is really important. Go for the eyes. The highest added crit gets applied. All your birds. And then you have this one. If you hit and crit with your melee attack, you get a crit multi-conversion as well onto the bird. Just also really strong and inspected twice. So you also want to be able to crit on your own. Health threshold is nice here. Again, like it's like calling in PoE. So whenever you use this, you can calling strike them from 16%. Very strong. Uh, you want the multi-hits. And here you get the mana gain and health gain. Very strong. The, the build here is a bit mana intense. But with this node, it actually makes it really easy to stay, sustain your mana. Because it's everything your Falcon does gains your mana back. So you actually have really good mana sustain just with that node. This is like, this buffs everything else that you have. Very good. Secondly, the next most important skill I would say is probably Aerial Assault. Uh, this is your movement skill, but it also is one of your main clear skills. So it's a traversal skill. So it's this one here. The further you attack, the further you um, go out on the side here when you use it, the further it goes. You can basically attack in place like this, and it don't really doesn't really go that far. Or you can, especially if you go up to the corners, it goes really far. As you can see, very far, and it just one-shots the packs. But it hits. So AoE is also really good. All right, so now you see that. That's the main skill. Uh, there are multiple ways where we can recover this faster. I'll show you that now. All right, so falconry, global damage. Then we have area assault. Now, skyward swoop is really strong. A portion of area assault's cooldown is recovered when your falcon hits an enemy. Now, one thing I've noticed is the caltrops that you throw on this falcon here, because they're from the falcon, it also counts towards this. So when you we jump over here and, and leave uh, all these caltrops and there's any enemy following you, it starts reducing the cooldown here. But also just any uh, any of your falcon abilities, like all these hits that the falcons uh, do will recover them. So you will like jump and then immediately, if you can, hit with like more falcon abilities and it's just gonna jump around and it's gonna lower it so you're gonna have a really fast time clearing this way because you're gonna be constantly using aerial assault and then you're gonna be dive bombing and then aerial assault dive bombing oh, i failed that and then every now and then you'll see something on the side or like a pack you didn't clear you send your bird out to uh, to sort it so another one here avian hunter is good now knock your damage. Uh, this is probably the last one you... Okay, so I would say... Caltrops, don't take that early on. I would take... Skyward Swoop... Into Avian Hunter... Into... For this build, you want to get to Ambush... And Slayer of the Big Prey... And Predator's Cascade. So you want as much air of effect... So that whenever you jump... You want to like one-shot a full pack. So the AoE is really important, in my opinion, for clear. You take the AoE and you take the hit damage. I would say for clearing, these two these two are the most important. Get early. This down here, if you ever struggle with mana, you can gain mana back here. And whatever your max mana is, works towards recovering the other skills as well. So it's very strong. That's why you constantly want to be using all the different skills. Because they lower the cooldowns of each other, basically, as you use them. So whenever you use Aerial Assault, you lower the cooldown of your other two bird skills. And whenever the bird hits, it lowers the cooldown of Aerial Assault. So you constantly want to be using it. And then I have the Caltrop stuff here. And the main reason I have the Caltrop stuff is just so it helps with the swoop. And it can slow things down behind you. And it's just kind of like utility-wise, it's neat to finish with. You can also go with the health recovery if you want that. Uh, this node over here is pretty strong. But it's better when you have more crits. I don't quite have enough crit. Mm, I don't know. I find this makes me faster because it generates more hits for the Skyward Swoop. And then this is just more consistent damage with cooldown recovery. This over here is neat, but I find it to be not consistent enough for this setup to be worth it. There is a variation we'll talk about at the end here, where you use Healing Gust and turn it into Ward, but that's an end game or advanced build. Right, onward to Dive Bomb. This is your third most important skill. And the way we've set this up is again, AoE is important, and the reason why AoE is important, especially in this skill, is because we're also using on the Wings of Shadow. It's your main burst, it's your main damage for single target. 
As you see here, there was only one bird. Now, what we have in our build is we're using the Shadow Falcon for the hit build here. We don't really have any bleed, so we can't really set this up. Uh, I don't really like Featherfall because it makes the it makes the bird sit there and like kind of throw out spikes but when the bird is just sitting there it means that it's not running around attacking so whenever you have like a duration skill here it's kind of annoying because your bird could just be hitting and you could be using your next skill anyways so that's why i'm not a big fan of that skill now it it's useful for like generating stacks of like talon blades and stuff like that now the reason why this node is so important area it's actually because we're using the shadow so the die bomb now creates a shadow and strike uh, your location of shadows instead. Now how do we generate shadows? Now that's where synchronized strike comes in. Which is the first, fourth most important skill. Because you see here four shadows. That's why we have four points. Because it creates four shadows falcons. So when you do this. All four gets hit. Now in true PoE fashion. Overlapping we. Good. Boom. As you can see, all these circles converge, so you can hit them all like out here. That's why you want the AoE. AoE, very good. And so, what kind of damage does this actually end up giving you? Yeah, you lose 25% of the global damage, but you're getting four Falcons. So that means a 300% total damage of the skill. So it's three times more damage if you hit with the full thing compared to not using it. Now I'm also using Dancing Shadows, which is where the Smoke Bomb comes in. The Smoke Bomb is just kind of like a neat little, it gives you shadows as well. If you, so you can throw the Smoke Bomb down and then you can dive bomb that as well, where there are shadows inside. But this thing can only generate three. So this version is always better. The Sync Strike version is always better as it puts the, gives you an additional shadow. And it guarantees more of the condensement of them. Uh, the inconsistency I talked about was the, this generates uh, shadows at random, in random locations. Again, why AoE is so important, because you can't really guarantee, like, especially if there's like an enemy here, and it starts creating shadows over here, it can get a little annoying, because you would dive bomb, and they would go like over here. However, the good thing about the shadow bomb is that when you do it right, you come in, and then boom, boom. It generates eight hits. It doubles the amount of hits inside the smoke bomb. So for bossing, what you do is you run to the boss, smoke down, synch uh, smoke bomb, synchronize strike, and then you dive bomb them for six times the damage of a normal dive bomb. And you can just keep doing that. And it's juicy damage. Juicy, juicy, juicy damage. Other noteworthy things uh, within this, rushing wings, it's, it's nice when they come down faster and I might actually spend, I kind of want to get up to four points in this just so the delay sh is shorter. Uh, I have this for reduced cooldown because you want to spam this as uh, much as possible. Mana cost, I mean, sure, it's kind of nice to not have this really cost mana because you are kind of mana. It's kind of mana intense as you can see this. Synchronized strike, 62 mana. Yikes. This one here as well gives you some mana back. Recover your aerial assault again. Very nice. Uh, and then last one is cloud gather. Now it's I think it's bugged right now, where when you if you ever dive bomb a smoke bomb, it stays there forever. It's only supposed to give it 40% duration, which makes it so that you can have smoke bomb up permanently if you refresh it every now and then. But right now it's bugged. But yeah, it's kind of broken. As you see here, I'm getting... Oh, there's actually a double smoke bomb in here now. Now there's a triple. So there's like some abuse here. I'm not trying to abuse. This whole setup, you can actually stack smoke blades up so many times if you wanted to. But I don't know. It feels very cheesy. It feels like abuse. I, I don't really want to go there and do that. Yeah. But so ends up clearing really smoothly. But when we do this, we just jump around like this. Sink strike. Bomb. Oh, I missed that. Strike bomb, jump again. Didn't have a cooldown ready there, so we just used the Falcon strikes. Um, think bomb, jump over to the next pack. Think bomb. Miss that one, clear up. Again. Kind of drag everything behind you, and they will run into you. And since the AoE is so good, you don't need to like perfectly hit. Because it actually clears up really well here. 
Where's this guy? It's this guy here. Smoke bomb, boom. And he dies. And that's how it plays. I am on hardcore, so I wouldn't really go up much more than... So I am doing some other regions where I go to like... I've done some corruption where you get like 100% more damage taken. And that's like fine. I think like 140, 150. Which is okay to run right now. Because a lot of prophecies um, have like 130 condition. But beyond that, with my current setup, with my current health, I wouldn't really go much higher because it gets a little scary after that point. Right, finish up the skills. Uh, right, the sync strike. You go for this node here for plus two shadows. You get the attack speed, so you get the attacks out as fast as possible. You get the base crit here. You get the base crit here so that you can crit. And especially why that's good is because that enables the this node to be exposed weakness to be more consistent so that you have more crits to do that one. Uh, then I just took the health here. Uh, I can essentially regain, like, a th every time I sink strike, I regain, like, a thousand life. And then the bird is healing for me. So you have really good recovery. Other noteworthy things. You can go for this for physical shred as well, instead of this, if you want to go for that. But my damage is already so high, so I don't really need it. Smoke bomb, duration area. This can be a good way to cleanse, if you don't have cleanse. Get rid of bleeds and poisons and all that. Another way of getting Silver Shroud stacks, and then sh Shadow Generation. Now, I had this miss, um, I had this, like, uh, we can get the slow stacks here, we'll take that. Glancing Blow. Faster, and that one. So that was the skills, now the gear. For the gear, it is mainly a dex, life to you, minion damage, and anything for defense. Now, so you see here, this is dex, minion damage, shred, and defensive stuff. And this is the only item I have with some mana right now. My mana feels a little low, but this kind of solves it. Aerial Assault is really good to increase, and Falconry is really good to increase. Uh, I mean, Dive Bomb is also good to increase. They're all, all the three main ones are really good to increase. Um, they give you minion damage as well. I think Falconry might be the most important one. Because it's all global, so it allows me to get more of these. So it's just, it's a lot of global burst. I'm not currently using the Ballista here. I was using that earlier. I'll explain what I did there. But yeah, Dex, you would want Dive Bomb here. You would want the Falconry base armor here. Again, just life and life and Dex and anything to give you defense. Crit Chance is actually really good. And it's because uh, whenever you... So on the necklace slot, there's not really anything else on the prefix that you want. I mean, you could get mana. You want to get one mana roll somewhere, I think. Be it on the weapon, the amulet, or the gloves. That's the base. Uh, otherwise, you just go crit there. And then, as you can see, I have melee crit chance on a crit chance base dagger. So my crit chance is 34. It goes up a bit whenever I dive bomb because I get talon blades. You get even more crit chance here. Uh, and the reason why that's good is because all this dive bomb stuff, it works together with the go for the eyes and exposed weakness, where you convert your crit multi and your crit chance. As your crit chance goes up, so does the birds. You see this 75% here of the crit chance? So my 34, that will be... I can't, I can't math right now. 25% or something. 23% crit chance to your bird which is seven plus the five plus the thing, and then they get some good crit multi. I'm still not sure how I really push this further. Um, there is one way, and I'll show you in a second, uh, where you can get this to 100%, no problem. But yeah, this is kind of, it's very low investment for how much it does. So the Cradle of the Erased is a noteworthy item because it has the block chance per stack of golden ages. You lose the golden ages on block. Now, the synergy here is the deflect and weave. Deflect and weave converts your block chance to glancing blow. So what happens when it does that? Well, then you can't block anymore. So you permanently have the golden ages stuff. Now, another thing to note here is that I'm trying to roll mo multiple of these. I have one good, so this one might be good for the next build I'm doing. You have a really good base item that caps your block, basically. It means that between the Cradle of the Erased, you need to get an 11% or higher on the block chance per Golden Ages. And the Glancing Blow node. Wait, I think maybe we can go the lowest? I don't know. Um, between the Glancing Blow stuff in here and the and this shield, you are Glancing Blow capped. So it's very low cost. 
to it like you, we are creative items kept super easy and glancing blows so we have a lot of extra stuff to build defense on here a good way to like solve a bunch of things this way and it's a fun item as well to build around but yeah everything else very generic i do prefer opal rings here cooldown recovery and attributes attributes always good less damage over time taken i think is really good if you can get a high roll there because dots can be very scary yeah, and then here we just have health and anything to solve our resist right now until my gear gets better. And that's the build. Whenever I do bossing right now and empowered, I pretty much, I oftentimes I will remove anywhere from 50 to 60 percent of the boss life in the first, uh, if the fr in the first round of smoke bomb bomb. Like this can sometimes remove 60 percent of the boss life. More often, it's like 40. What, what you then notice is the fact that the boss has like damage reduction based on recent damage taken. So it's hard to like really burst fast. But sometimes you get really lucky and you get some really big fast hits in. And then you Falcon Strikes to call. And the fight is over in like 10 seconds. Really cool. Okay, some other noteworthy things here at the end. The reason why I haven't taken Birds Aren't Real. Because Birds Aren't Real is actually amazing. It would make your Falcon be replaced by a Shadow Falcon for the purpose of Dive Bomb. So you could... Dive Bomb and Falconry at the same time. You could have this happen while this was happening. You can't do that without that node. However, the node is bugged. And it essentially reduces your damage to like nothing. For no particular reason. So don't pick this node for now until they fix it. Once they've fixed it, pick up that node. Very good node. Now, other variation you can do, which uses Go For The Eyes, is a... Full minion damage build. Now what you need to do for that build is you need to remove sync strikes from the whole equation and you put in uh, Ballista instead. Now that's why I had this on the chest for plus one max Ballista. Now what you would do with Ballista is you would go for the route where you get the more attack speed, twin shots, uh, contaminating shots, and then the most important thing Perfect aim. It's another stat ratio conversion similar to the one you have in Falconry. And then let me show you the the, um, the item that you need to use with this. It's this one. Gambler's Fallacy. Critical strike chance if you haven't dealt a crit recently is 100%. Now if you have dealt a, a crit recently, all your crit chance is 50% less. Which would mean that my crit would be like 3% if I hit recently. So when you then remove sync strikes and you ne you don't use a single thing in the build, that also means you can't use caltrops, because caltrops also, even though they're they they're considered like falcon hits, they're also considered your hits, and it would also also this shadow falcon is bugged and it's considered your hit. It's weird. Anything that's considered your hit disables this. However, you can put this on. And then your critical chance is absurd, as you can see here. You need like 125, 130 to cap the crit chance of your bird. So using this thing right now, my bird has a 100% crit chance. And I could remove everything in my build to give it crit and it will be kept. So the amount of stats that you forego by having this, it will be like... The crit on the weapon, the crit on the amulet, multiple nodes on the tree. Like, it adds up to it being really silly good. Now, as you can see, this, this necklace doesn't have any other stats either. So, it's like, ooh, like, the, not, not having the less damage taken is kind of big. But you can get a version of this thing that's similar that you can get LP on. But it's, it's hard to farm. I think it's in Lightless Arbor or something. Uh, it's, one, it's in one of the dungeons that you can find a version of this item does that but it's a it's something to consider for another variation with 100% crit it's very powerful that's actually how I started the build so if you just you pick this amulet up in act one and then you just whenever you get the bird you go ballista plus bird and you just have permanent crit from there on out and it's really fun so you should try that but yep that's the build the two variations it's really fun once I have set up the low life build, which is the next one we are looking at here, right? So we're trying to set up a low life variation build here. 
we have an opportunity to go even higher. Now, the reason why the low life build might work with this bird build is from one single node. It is this node right here, ward gain. So missing health recovery, 10%. That goes up to 50%. And then you turn that into ward. And this is also where I am considering using... I'm hoping that this works. The healing, because you're healing. And then healing effectiveness... 170% on this thing, right? That will be the 50% and that 50% number getting juiced by healing effectiveness. But I'm thinking if I have like 3,000 life, 1,500 is half that. And then you get healing effectiveness for God knows how much. So you get like 400%. No, let's just say you get 300%. That's 6,000 ward gained on one click. And then we just want to have as much cooldown recovery on this node to spam that to maintain a high amount. So that's a build I'm working on. That's the variation. That's the end game that I'm working on currently. Um, but as you could see, it has some pretty... The items you're forced into are... This one is not an item you would normally want. Because the falconry armor that I'm not currently using, but you should use instead of this, uh, is insane. So it's, it's very, very strong. Essentially, the upside of this is that you get, I don't know, like, we're gonna get three times the EHP. And on Hardcore, it's just, you can't say no to that. It's the only way we can really push the corruption, so. Yep. That's the build. Hope you enjoyed it. And remember, guys, if I can do it, you can too.